Epstein-Barr virus, the virus that causes mononucleosis, also known as glandular fever, is known to be strongly associated with multiple sclerosis and may actually be the cause of MS. Today we'll take a close look at the evidence behind this association. Let's have some fun. Today I will show you that not only is EBV linked to MS, there is a plausible mechanism of action for how it could be the cause of MS, and I'll also talk about what we could potentially do about it to help people with the disease or potentially prevent or cure MS in the future, and I'll also give my personal opinion about this connection. By the way, I'm Brandon Bieber, and I make videos about multiple sclerosis every Wednesday, so please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. So let's take a look at the link between EBV and MS. Virtually 100% of people with multiple sclerosis who are adults have evidence of prior exposure to the Epstein-Barr virus based on antibodies found in their blood. Many studies actually show a 100% probability of having these antibodies. A meta-analysis found that about 96% of studies find some kind of association between mono and MS. And even if you look at only people who have the antibodies, people with MS have higher levels of the antibodies than controls. And people who actually have a history of mono, the kissing disease that makes you sleepy and sick with enlarged lymph nodes, they have double the risk of MS. Now, of course, most people who have MS don't report a history of mono because EBV often doesn't cause obvious symptoms. Well, what is EBV? Well, it's a virus that's normally transmitted by saliva. It's in the herpes family of viruses, and it initially affects epithelial cells in the tonsils. And if it occurs in young children, it usually causes no symptoms. If it occurs in adolescents or young adults, it causes mono or glandular fever. It causes severe sleepiness, flu-like symptoms, enlarged lymph nodes. It can cause other problems with the liver or enlargement of the spleen in some cases. Uh, but usually it resolves spontaneously over time. And you develop these antibodies against particles in the virus about two to four months, and they persist for life, and you're protected against the virus. However, the virus remains latent into the body and is never fully eliminated, but is controlled by CD8-positive cytotoxic T cells. However, even though it doesn't cause symptoms as a viral infection, it's been linked to other diseases. One, of course, is multiple sclerosis, but it's linked to other diseases such as nasopharyngeal carcinoma and Burkitt's lymphoma, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, what is the association between MS and EBV specifically? How could it cause MS? Well, if we look at some people with progressive MS, we see that it may not just be an incidental finding. It's known that some people with secondary progressive MS have these abnormal B lymphocytes inside of their meninges that may be sort of driving progression of the disease. And when you look at these B lymphocytes, some of them actually are infected by the virus. More evidence for EBV. It turns out that Epstein-Barr virus after it infects the epithelial cells, tends to remain dormant in the memory B cells. So it's sort of using these cells to hang out. And because of this, it has an adaptation to immortalize B cells. Normally, B cells are regulated by the rest of the immune system, such as by CD25 T cells, but it tends to make them immune to T cell surveillance. So the virus is sort of doing this to protect itself, but as a secondary effect, it may be messing up your immune system's self-regulation. Epstein-Barr virus can also cause breakdown of the blood-brain barrier, which is known to be very important in multiple sclerosis because it's actually the peripheral immune system that's attacking the central nervous system in MS. EBV-infected cells have been shown to take myelin proteins and present them to other immune cells, such as CD8-positive T cells. So we always thought that the B cells weren't that important in MS, but they're very important not just because they generate autoreactive antibodies, but because they are the antigen-presenting cells, along with macrophages and dendritic cells. There was an autopsy done of a patient who died of a post-Tysabri rebound. Sometimes if Tysabri is stopped, there can be rebound disease activity. And the autopsy showed B cells in the brain that were infected by EBV. Now, MS is known to occasionally occur in clusters, which is why we have long known that there are a lot of environmental factors in MS. 
In one so-called MS cluster, they actually tested the Epstein-Barr virus genotype and they were all exactly the same, which would not occur normally. So it's almost like EBV directly triggered MS in this cluster of individuals. Okay, what about the counter evidence? Well, I told you that EBV serology or blood tests for the antibodies are almost always positive in adults. But a study by Dr. Wabant at UCSF found that that's not true in pediatric MS. They found that most of them have the antibodies, about 83%, and certainly that was much more than controls, only about 42%, but still not 100%. So if you think in terms of Koch's postulates to prove that something is an infectious cause, it should be present in all of the individuals who have the disease. The other thing is that EBV is very common. Almost everyone's been affected with it. And about 90% of adults, even without MS, have antibodies. So when I said 100%, that sounded like an impressive number, but it's really 100% versus 90%, not that big of a difference. Another thing is that if EBV is an infection causing MS, wouldn't immunosuppressants be unsuccessful and make the disease worse? It turns out that there's very good evidence that immunosuppressants make the disease better. For instance, hematopoietic stem cell transplant, B-cell depleting therapies, Lymtrada are all very successful treatments. Wouldn't they make an infection worse? Also, if you look at Burkitt's lymphoma, another disease that's caused by Epstein-Barr virus, you would think that it would go hand in hand with MS in terms of geographic distribution. This is not the case. And I'll show you in the map on the next slide that the distribution of Burkitt's lymphoma is completely different. Another thing is post-transplant lymphoproliferative disorder. This is a disorder that's caused by Epstein-Barr virus in people who are immunodeficient. Uh, caused by reactivation of the virus in B cells. And these people can get enlarged lymph nodes and fever and other problems. But this disease is not linked to MS. Why not? If EBV can cause this, why wouldn't it also cause MS? Also, it probably sounded very impressive that we found EBV in the brain of people with MS, but EBV is everywhere. And we've even found it in the B cells and brain tissue of healthy controls without MS. Now, this is the map looking at Burkitt's lymphoma, and you can see it's very close to the equator, totally different than the geographic distribution of MS. And this is the study by Dr. Wilbont. If you look at the antibodies on the left-hand panel and you look at anti-EBNA1 and anti-VCA, those are the antibodies associated with Epstein-Barr virus. They're definitely not 100% or anything close to it. Now, what about some interesting other theories? Well, when you talk about immunosuppressants, we always think immunosuppressants stop the immune attack on the brain, and that's how they're effective. But some people think that they may actually work a little bit differently. So certain medications, such as rituximab, ofatunumab, ocrelizumab, Lemtrada, hematopoietic stem cell transplant, cytoxan, all of these drugs destroy the B cells. And so they're sort of destroying the reservoir of Epstein-Barr virus. So one sort of pet theory that some people have is they're not really working just by immunosuppression. They're also working by eliminating Epstein-Barr virus. Another really interesting theory relates to human endogenous retrovirus W, which is actually associated with MS and seems to be linked with EBV. People with mono and higher EBV antibodies seem to have higher levels of this virus. And it's kind of interesting because there's an inverse association between HIV and multiple sclerosis, even correcting for sex and demographics and things like that. And some people think that the antiretroviral drugs given to people with HIV may actually be benefiting MS by killing this virus, HERVW. Now, what can we do about Epstein-Barr virus? Well, one study by Pender showed that we can potentially take T cells and make them target Epstein-Barr viruses and transfer them into people. And people have attempted vaccination programs for Epstein-Barr virus so that we can potentially prevent MS along with nasopharyngeal carcinoma and Burkitt's lymphoma. And so it's very interesting research. Now, if you ask my personal opinion, I'm very convinced that Epstein-Barr virus is a strong risk factor for MS and is definitely part of the pathogenesis of MS in most individuals. However, I'm not 100% convinced that it's the sole cause of MS, mostly because there's so many other factors because of the data on Burkitt's lymphoma and because it doesn't seem that all people with pediatric MS have Epstein-Barr virus, although I know there are some differences in technique for measuring antibodies, which could throw me off.
So if you have any comments or questions, please post in the comments below.